couple of people who are tuning in. So uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, good afternoon for everybody who's watching in L.A. And good evening from my perspective, because uh, uh, I'm broadcasting uh, today from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and it's already 7.30 p.m. out here. Uh, welcome to uh, a episode, episode 21 of the West Coast Jazz Hour, hosted by my co-host Josh Nelson, pianist, composer, arranger extraordinaire, <laughs> and yours truly, uh, Kevin Van Elzen. Um, today, uh, we are going to do a tribute show uh, with uh, several recordings uh, that are all have one thing in common, and that's the fact that drummer Frank Cap uh, plays on all of those recordings. He was a uh, wonderful, super tasteful, super uh, swinging uh, drummer uh, who worked a lot in the LA jazz scene. Um, I'll uh, mention some uh, uh, biogra biographical information uh, for you guys uh, for, uh, because of some research that I did. Um, he was born on August 20th, 1931 in Worcester, Massachusetts as Francis Capucho uh, and uh, Wooster. passed Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, oh, that's Worcester. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why you're my co-host, because you can correct me. I'm good me. for something. I'm good <laughs> <Yeah>. for something. <laughs> And uh, uh, he passed uh, on September 12th, 2017 in Studio City, uh, California. And uh, he worked with a number of people. Uh, I should mention uh, at first uh, Terry Gibbs because Terry hired uh, Frank Cap uh, after Mel Lewis left uh, the Dream Band and um, basically uh, played with uh, Frank Cap for, I think he mentioned over 30 years. Um, so Terry yeah. Gibbs is definitely in his uh, in uh, in his discography of people that he played with. Um, he played with Marty Page. He played with Bob Florence, uh, Benny Goodman, the Condoli brothers, Herbie Harper, Paul Smith, uh, Andre Previn for a long time as part of his trio. And he was also a entrepreneur himself. He was a very successful uh, contractor and put together also his own bands, uh, such as the uh, Frank Cap, Nat Pierce, Juggernaut big bands, which we're going to uh, show a couple of things from. And he also had the Frank Cap percussion group, which is one of the most interesting uh, finds that I actually got through you, Josh, uh, uh, over the past couple of weeks, because you mentioned this group and I never heard uh, of it. And then I started listening to a different record than the record that you showed me. And I was like, this is so cool because it's a complete percussion section of four percussionists with a full big band. And the arrangements are made very, very uh, uh, stylish and very sophisticated to have like a nice balance between the percussion section and the big band. So uh, he was quite the entrepreneur as, as well. And Josh, you've, you've played also with him. So do you have like an, a, a personal experience that you want to share about Frank? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, Frank was, you know, one of the greats and uh, felt very lucky to have actually just only one, one gig with him, but it was really fun. And it was right, right before he passed. It was probably a couple years. So I want to say 2015 and, um, there's a great uh, series here that's been happening in Los Angeles for many years, hosted by a wonderful curator and historian of the music named Ken Poston. And mm -hmm. it was part of the LA Jazz Institute um, series. And um, uh, it was a, a set of music from Peter Gunn, uh, the Henry Mancini score. Uh, and it was really fun because Lanny, Lanny Morgan was also one of the great alto saxophonist, from my first time getting to play with him. And Bob Summers was playing trumpet, and I believe it was Dave Stone on bass, and my friend Lolly Allen, the vibraphonist, was playing. So um, Frank was, you could see he was slowing down, but he still had his fire, you know. Um, he was having some hand problems, I remember, a little bit. So he was kind of struggling and had a, had a brace. But he still played great, and to hear his groove and, you know, sit next to royalty, you know, someone who's played on so many recordings and in so many different genres. I mean, just, just great. So yeah, it was short and sweet, but, uh, 
it was really nice to to get to play with him once. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Uh, I watched also a um, uh, an interview uh, of him on YouTube, and he seemed uh, a super super sweet guy and very social and. Uh, also in for a joke here and there, which we're going to also mention something about. Um, so uh, why don't we get into some uh, music? And uh, Josh, why don't you show the first track that you want to show all of us? Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching, by the way. Uh, my friend Thelma is watching. Hey, Thelma and Gary. They had the pleasure of seeing Frank play with Paul Smith, uh, which was really Really cool. I'm a huge Paul Smith fan and got to know Paul. We talked about him on the show before, right before he passed as well. Yeah. So another great musician that uh, has left us, but I'm glad you caught them. And thanks for being here on the show, you guys. Yeah, let's see here. Let's see. We're going to start with, um, well, you know, speaking of that percussion record, um, that percussion series of records that Frank did, yeah. um, I'm just blown away by the, uh, <laughs> the the creativity and just the musicianship on this record. Uh, I've been listening to it a lot the last few days, and it's uh, a tribute to Henry Mancini, speaking of Henry mm -hmm. Mancini. And this one track I just love, and it's called My Man Shelley. Uh, the credits here on Discogs list a lot of famous folks. Larry Bunker on percussion, ML Richards. We have Ronnie Lang on saxophone, Frank Rossellino on trombone, Ted Nash on saxophone, Bud Shank, oh, just the list goes on. And the great Bob Florence played piano and arranged this, uh, oh. at least according to Discogs, which may or may not be true, but it looks like it <laughs> probably is. <laughs> yeah, let's, so let's go with it. Let's go with it. So this is uh, Frank Cap, our, our tribute show today, and we're leading off with percussion in a tribute to Henry Mancini, and it's called My Man Shelley. Oh, into the last track. <laughs> <laughs> Try to time it perfect. Yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> what a fun take. Yeah. Oh, man. This 1961, if you're just joining us, uh, going back to 1961. <laughs> Frankie Cat Percussion Group, a percussion and a tribute to Henry Mancini, and that was a song called My Man Shelley. Obviously a tribute to the great Shelley Mann. Um, wow. I love that. And hearing all, all the percussionists do their thing. What would you say is... is just curious, Kevin. Style-wise, we've 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 talked a lot about you know we've played many tracks from Shelley Mann, Mel Lewis, Stan Levy, um, Frank Butler, uh, so uh, Jeff Hamilton. Well, Jeff was on. <laughs> Didn't yeah. Play much of his music, but we've heard so many of the greats. What would you say is unique about uh, Frank Cap's style compared comparatively, or special? Um. That's uh, it's a very good question because um, I feel that uh, all of the um, all of the guys that were like uh, working drummers in the in in the L.A. Uh, jazz world, like all of the guys that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. um, uh, don't forget about Earl Palmer, Earl, Earl Palmer, yeah. uh, Jack Sperling, Chuck Flores, all yeah. of those guys. They they all it, it seemed that there was like a pretty uh, a pretty like decent tradition of like the foundation that Shelley Mann and Mel had laid down um, in in the scene and in the music also in general um, and uh, it is it's it's very curious to see like what all of those guys did with all of those influences. Um, Mm. like in their own way like uh also uh, buddy rich and louis belson were out here but uh, shouldn't forget about that and for example like a guy like sperling i believe who also played double bass drum uh put really like the thing of shelly mel and louis uh together in his own way mm -hmm. and i have the feeling also a little bit with uh with frank that he in sound he is so close to mel mm -hmm. he is very very close to mel because i was i was checking out um a record that he's he's on one track on a record uh from annie ross with suit sims which mm. is called a gasser and he's on one track and he sounds almost exactly like like mel um which i think is crazy because it's virtually impossible to sound like like mel but he had like a similar type of sound going on. He had that same kind of like cymbal sound also going on, like same type of register, same right. type of feel. But then he would incorporate his stuff with, uh, uh, I would say, influences that I would notice from Buddy Rich and also like all, all of those fills that you were just hearing of him playing brushes are like also like kind of bebop related. So kind of like right. the Philly Joe, R. Taylor uh, type of vibe and... I think that he uh, he did really a phenomenal job at mixing the subtleties of Mel and Shelley, but then mixing it also with technical uh, technical and um, hard bop vocabulary from like Buddy Rich and and Philly Joe Jones. That's that's what how I would say um, cool. that that Frank stood out. And Frank was I, I I feel that he wasn't also afraid like using um uh, particular sounding symbols like mm. i've listened to a couple of recordings and then somewhere he uses like a very small china symbol for example there that he uses on a couple of crashes or like a very um a very high pitched splash for example that i didn't hear with um well buddy rich had a splash symbol in his in his setup but um he wasn't afraid to experiment i guess a little bit with like different symbol type of sounds right very cool. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I'm sure the folks watching appreciate a little technical behind the scenes uh, revealing of, of, of him. And m many people might not be familiar with Frank Cap as we are. Um, yeah. And, uh, but um, thank you. What would yeah, you like well, to play? You want to play a track? Yeah, uh, b before I'm going to play the track, I've, oh. I've noticed already that that uh, uh, our our friend and mentor Jeff Hamilton is also watching, and uh, we should definitely mention a uh, honorable uh, consultancy uh, 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 for this 
for this episode because he helped us out with a couple of uh, yes. information things. Um, so, uh, Jeff, if you have anything, anything to say about what I just said, please let me know. <laughs> um, yeah, what should, what should I play first? Um, why don't we start with this uh, Dave Pell uh, recording that you have, Josh? Um, so Dave Pell was a uh, woodwind and saxophone player here in the L.A. scene, also very famous for putting uh, together his own big bands and also his octet um, uh, his own octet. Um, he is definitely like uh, something that you can call one of the legendary uh, LA guys together with Shorty Rogers and Bud Shank. He really was somebody who um, was uh, put a stamp really on the, the LA jazz scene. And uh, he made several records and, and Frank uh, Cap is on uh, the record where uh, they play um, repertoire from uh, Harry James. And uh, by coincidence, Sip is also on this uh, on this record, uh, who we had on the show. Next to Sip, it's uh, Harry Klee, Willie Schwartz, who Sip talked about also uh, for uh, for a little bit. Uh, Buddy Clark on bass and Don Trenner on piano. Uh, I believe that uh, John Odino is also on trumpet on this uh, recording. So a bunch of LA cats. And uh, we're going to listen to a track that is called Cheery Beery Bin. Cheery Cheery Bin. Okay. Dave Pell. Here we go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
trumpet uh, extravaganza, you know? <laughs> yeah. With yeah. Harry James. Great playing. The the thing that I love what uh, what Frank does on this recording is his phrasing with the band is just incredible. And that's a thing that uh, I've seen with so many of the great uh, LA jazz drummers uh, like Sperling and, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Shelly, uh, Mel, when he was living in LA, but also with all of the current drummers like uh, Peter Erskine, Joe LaBarbera, Jeff Hamilton, their phrasing with a, with a big band is just incredible. It's mm-hmm. like right there in the phrasing of how the horn players also phrase. And that's something that's, uh, to me as a drummer has been very interesting to to dive into that and also to listen for that like how are the horn players phrasing and how are they timing everything and you know like what is what, how they're breathing and all of uh, all of that stuff so the way how uh, Frank is like literally orchestrating and phrasing with the band is just really 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 yeah. really great it's masterful good. yeah yeah yeah, we have. I couldn't agree more. Um, that's something that I I remember at Long Beach State when I was getting my undergrad there. The director would talk to us about the connection between the rhythm section and the horn section, you know, in a big band, and played some examples of where he thought it was amazing, you know, examples of con- that, that kind of listening from the rhythm section, especially the drummer. And one of the examples I remember was a juggernaut example. I forget mm. who it was because it was many years ago. But then there was Thad Jones, Mel Lewis, and um, I can't even remember all. Anyway, it was it was cool to hear it then and go, oh, okay, because the drummer I think was having some trouble connecting. So you can really hear it, like you say, in Frank's playing. He's really just a great musician. We have. I, I think we should mention that we have actually. Um, some some more royalty watching. I was just informed that Frank's daughter is actually watching right now. Deveni, oh, how cool! Yeah, Deveni Kelly. I hope I'm saying your name right. Thank you so much for being here. And I don't think I got to meet you when I the one time I played with Frank, but uh, we're we're happy to have you here and talk about your father. And um, I don't speak for you, Kevin, but I'm not a <laughs> I'm not an expert on any of this subject. I'm learning just as much in every moment. I just I my age and, and experience in the LA jazz scene, I've had the opportunity to, to get to play with some of the greats, including your father. And so this is just a you know learning experience and sharing the music. So thanks for being with us. And um, Nan is also here, Nan Phillips. Uh, Frank was my late husband, Freddie's best friend. Mm-hmm. Out of time with the Porcaros and Emil and Celeste Richards. Wow. Fred was also the band manager for Juggernaut. Those were really great times. I was very fortunate at a young age to hear the band regulate Dante's Alphonse as well. Thanks, Nan. So this is so cool to have have some folks here that directly were involved with Frank or related. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. John Prue's here. John played with uh, Frank regularly. I didn't really yeah. at Frank. Generation Gap, Gap with Graham Decker and Edwin. Wow. Did not know that. That's so cool, John. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is great. I'm loving it. It's a big reunion for everybody with celebrating Frank. Yeah. Cool. So Dave Pell, yeah. Dave Pell, I met him a few times at Charlie O's. Uh-huh. He would come in and I think he called me for a gig once and I couldn't do it, you know. Now I wish I had voicemails saved with folks like that, you know. <laughs> Bill yeah. Holman calling me. Hi, Josh, it's Bill Holman. Can you play yeah. the band? I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, Bill Holman just called me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. John Clayton calling you. Just moments where you just are like, wow, I wish I had that recording, you know. Dave Pell, pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool memory. Yeah, and, and, yeah. Fra- and Frank worked worked a lot with him. I, I don't know. <clears throat> excuse me i don't know how many uh, how many recordings uh, he uh, he made exactly but it seemed that uh, dave in the in the heydays uh, worked with mel and sperling and and cap Oof. and i think when 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 mel left town uh cap basically took over wow one great drummer to another <laughs> yep that's true okay. that's true should i take us somewhere next 
Yeah. Would you like to do a video? What would you like to do, Kev? Well, uh, since you mentioned the juggernaut, maybe it's cool to show a video. Let's do that. Great. We uh, we scoured uh, we scoured the the YouTube and the internet for some uh, some nice uh, media outtakes and uh, uh, the thing that I came across was a uh, excerpt from some kind of TV show of the uh, Pierce Cap Juggernaut Big Bands, which has Marshall Royal also on uh, lead alto, um, and I believe that the composition is called Avenue C, which might be also something that the Basie band played at some point, hmm. but I can't say that for sure. Okay. Okay, let me share the screen. There we go. to the T. Yeah. Is that Al Aaron's on trumpet? Whoops. I'm not sure. The trumpet yeah, it was. Right? It was. Yeah. Yeah, he sounded great. It's not someone you hear very often. Red Holloway. Who was the other sax player? I uh, was, I think in the uh, was that, that was Marshall. it says, yeah. no, that, I think that was somebody called, named Buster Cooper, oh, Buster. maybe. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, Jeff Jeff is saying that it's Al. Cool. On trumpet. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I have memories of uh, for our, the Angelinos that have been on the scene <laughs> for a while, longer than me probably, but um, K, K Jazz used to, our great jazz station, 
used to be KLON when it was based at Long Beach State. And Chuck Niles would always, I remember him on the radio saying, oh, the Nat Pierce, Frank <laughs> Cap Juggernaut Big Band on the, <laughs> on the KLON Jazz Caravan. They used to have this caravan. It was a bus. And they would take you to all the clubs in L.A. when there were like a bunch of clubs. And the Juggernaut was always somewhere on that caravan so you could drink and ride on the bus right they didn't want people driving around it was pre-uber <laughs> pre <-lift. laughs> yeah 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 but that's so cool <laughs> it was great it I was a yearly that. yeah it was so great i remember when it ended i did it once and it was great because it went to just all the spots i mean at the time i went it was i don't know late 90s early 2000s so probably a lot of those places that already closed dante's and alfonso's and carmelo's and but I can hear Chuck's voice saying, uh, Juggernaut Big Band. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. sounds so yeah. good. I've heard his name, uh, uh, the, his, his name of the radio, radio DJ also a bunch of times over the course of the years that he was like the main jazz guy in L.A. to get, to get to, for, for radio stuff. Oh, that was Herman Riley, Jeff Hamilton. Yeah. God, it didn't look like him. I played with Herman a few times at Club Brasserie in the in the hotel there with Lorca Hart, Ryan Cross. That's oh, a, okay. Herman, Herman was a sweetheart. God, he was such a great player. Um, yeah, Chuck was the voice of jazz in L.A. for years. And also this other guy, Sam Fields, I really liked. He was, like, amazing. Just... And they knew a lot, you know. And that was when they used to read every name on every record, right? It was like... <laughs> it was a history lesson because you weren't just getting mm. music you were hearing the cats they were well it was recorded here and there was this per and they'd read the whole big band you know or after they played the after they played the track so great kind of right those days yeah yeah yeah. Anyway. yeah i was just i was just talking uh with a friend of mine about that like how uh how much there's actually like uh there, there's no real variety show on tv anymore like how well, may, like maybe like Harry Connick's show is like something that's coming close, but you know, like it wouldn't wouldn't it be great to have something like that happening again with like some kind of yes, you know, like crooner type of person, you know, to bring that back, so, uh, so, like the Dean Martin show. I think you should do it, Kevin. I think your calling <laughs> is here, man. <laughs> Kevin Van Den Elsen. A variety hour. <laughs> well, if, there, if there's if there's anybody from CBS or ABC yeah. or some broadcast <laughs> watching, I'm, I, I mean, and Josh, you should just you know like be my musical director then. Totally, man. I'd be yeah. right there with you. Yeah, I'd yeah, your, yeah. I'd be your Steve Allen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, only if we can dream. If we yeah. can dream. Yeah. Um. Actually. Um. Uh, should we continue with uh, something of yours? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's stay in... I believe this is still 50s, this record. Uh, 60, excuse me. 1960s uh, Bob Florence big band record called Bongo's Reeds and Brass, which I do have it on vinyl, which I've, I've showed already because I love this record. It's just... Love it. It's so swinging, and Bob Florence's arrangements are amazing and it's just totally like groovy it's good good uh, happy hour music to make a cocktail with yeah that's, that's for sure and before uh, before we're gonna play uh, that yeah. uh we should mention that uh due to uh the impromptu consultancy of uh, mr jeff hamilton we uh, got to know actually that um uh, frank was very proud at working uh, together with uh, Bob Florence and, uh, on, and playing on his big band records. Um, this one is absolutely fantastic uh, that we're, that we're going to show, but there is uh, one record that's called Here and Now from the Bob Florence uh, big band. Right. Uh, and that was the record that Frank uh, apparently was particularly uh, proud of. Um, and that unfortunately is only available on uh, vinyl. It is not uh, nowhere to be found on uh, uh, on internet. You can't find anything of it from uh, uh, on uh, YouTube. There's no iTunes of it, uh, which is actually kind of great because then that means that you should just get the vinyl, which I'm definitely planning to because it's on my to get yeah, list for too. sure. Yep, absolutely. Oh, one before we play the track. Um... 
Thelma reminded me of Helen Borgers, of course, the, who recently passed away. Another great DJ on KJ, uh, KLO, yeah. who lasted yeah. the K-Jazz days, but she was a great supporter of mine because I went to Long Beach State for my undergrad, and she was so supportive. So, little side note. Yeah, re absolutely. Remembering the great Helen Borgers and all those at KLON who were champions of this music for many, many yeah. years. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. even saw Helen Borgers a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. And her brother, Ken who was also a DJ at KLON back in the day. Then he went down to KSDS in San Diego. Can't, oh, can't, okay. Totally like a walking encyclopedia, both of them of, of jazz. But Helen was a sweetie, absolutely. Okay, we're going to listen to the, the standard uh, Green Eyes, and this is from the Bob Florence uh, Bongos, Reeds, and Brass album from 1960. And this has Frank Kaplan drums. <laughs> Goes Reads and Brass from 1960. Uh, Bob Florence, piano and Celeste in arrangement. Al Viola's playing guitar. Bass player I'm not familiar with, Lyle Ritz. Nope. You hear him? Yeah. Not familiar. Ray Sherman on piano as well. Uh, Gene Estes was the Bongo Vibes Temple Blocks player. Bill Green on flute, clarinet, alto. John Cave on French horn, Herbie Harper, trombone, Captain. Mm -hmm. Marty Berman, uh, Berman there on the bass sax. Really cool record. Green Eyes. Yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. We're checking out the music of the legacy of Frank Kapp, uh, the drummer, who uh, is our tribute show today. Yeah. Any yeah, thoughts there's on that uh, groove? I mean, that. <laughs> I mean. Moving or chopping right along. I love his. his his steadfastness through that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, um, Adam Bravo was uh, is writing what a snare sound he got, and I also totally agree with that because he is one of those guys who has just an incredible snare sound. Yeah. Um, that's also the thing that he mm. he kind of made like sort of like a mesh between Mel sound and Buddy Rich's sound, so mm. it is fat but is very precise and full of sound. Um, which I really, really love. I'm, mm. I'm trying to, to, to get to a, a sound like that 
you know, like on a daily basis to get right. that out of my instrument. Um, I would actually assume that uh, the Frank Cap percussion group came after this recording because uh, this is. Uh, yes, it did. A, it's a full big band with a full percussion section uh, with with timpani and bongos and, yeah. uh, uh, you know, like uh, mallets and that kind of stuff. Yeah, this... And I wouldn't be. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if if uh, if Frank started uh, his own band because of this record. Maybe you're you're very. I was just thinking about that. Funny you mentioned that. Listening to both of them, I was like, wow, that sounds a lot like the Percussion Group record. Yeah. Uh, and that it, it, Discogs lists the Mancini tribute record is sixty one, so the very next year. Yeah. Sixty. Yeah. But nice comparison. It, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was mm -hmm. the. If that was Impetus the to yeah exactly or something yeah yeah there was also like I think here especially here in this recording Frank is playing like a super special sounding symbol like right in the beginning of this track which is like very high pitched um, hmm. and that's like one of those examples that I thought like oh he uses like very special sounding symbols but then he has like also one or two ride symbols that sound just gorgeous like mm. incredible which mix and they mix really nicely with the with the sound of uh uh of the band and mm. the last thing regarding symbols is al almost all of the guys that i mentioned uh, besides cap uh mel um shelly uh sperling um even Earl, uh, Earl Palmer is also one of the guys. They uh, always used a, a China symbol, like a big China symbol that they would use under uh, saxophone uh, shout choruses. Frank uses a China, but instead of playing it the way how all of those guys, including myself, plays it, where you have like this going as a curve, because the China symbol curves up, he put it upside down. Uh, and put and put a symbol stand on the china what uh, what louis belson did as well uh, and then he would ride on it too and i was like that's actually really neat that's actually something that i haven't seen anybody do yeah very unique wow that's cool thanks for your insights that's great i'm learning a lot today <laughs> we have uh, we have an esteemed member of uh, frank's band for over 40 years the great trombonist alan kaplan's with watching oh, with hey alan nice welcome yeah. alan any stories you want to share and chime in, please. We're just exploring his music, and um, yeah, really happy to. Uh, oh, yeah. and he was. Al yeah, I just saw the same thing you did. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the man who keeps on consulting. <laughs> yeah, our, our magician wizard in the wings there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, where should we? What about those photos? Do you want to get into those soon? Or maybe I'll yeah. show them as um, we're listening or something. How about that? Yeah, if that's possible, for yeah, sure. Yeah, well, let's play a track that I don't have to do video for, and then I can share. Yeah. So Kevin and I just got some wonderful photos. I hope he's watching right now. Art Pizornik, uh, I believe the photographer for, we were suspecting, the Newport Beach Jazz Party that has been going on for many years. I've played at a few times, and there's some great photos of Frank in here and I think um, we can share them uh, that would be really great uh, a lot of great photos here so what um, what would you like to play Kevin while we um, while we look at the photos we can listen to something um, so uh, why don't we play that one thing that I also sent over to you which is uh, a recording of the Marty Page octet take the H train take the A train Take the A train. Okay. Yeah, this is a. This is also like uh, uh, I'm trying to find everything that Marty Page was involved with, uh, mm. everything that he wrote, uh, the stuff with Ella, the stuff with Sammy Davis, uh, Art Pepper plus Eleven is uh, Marty Page. Uh, I now have all of his uh, big band records that are under his own name, and um, he recorded this record together with uh, Jimmy Jufri. It's under Jimmy Jufri's name. Uh, under the title Tenors West. Mm. And besides, uh, Marty is playing himself on this 
uh, record too. Besides Marty and Jimmy Drew Free, it's uh, on this track, Jack Dulong on baritone saxophone, uh, Joe Mondragon on bass, Ooh. and Bob Enavoldson on uh, uh, Val Trombone. And this dates from 1956. Very Take cool. the A train. Okay. Computer sound share. There we go. <laughs> Art Pizornik, these are fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing these with us so we can share them with everyone watching. Yeah. <laughs> Devani is also saying, there's the consultant. <laughs> consultant. Long time buddies, Cap and Terry Gibbs. Yes. We were lucky enough to have Terry on our show. Yeah, and he spoke about uh, Cap also yeah. in uh, in our show, if That's I remember right. correctly. Well, these are fantastic. And Art, Art is watching. Thank you, Art, for sending Thank all you. of those great pictures. Oh, man. So great. We'll treasure them. Yeah. Uh, I uh, There was actually a uh, uh, picture that Jeff also sent us um, oh, yes. with... Uh, Frank, can you pull that up, Josh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. So there is a story that goes actually with this picture. Um, because uh, Jeff and Frank were uh, really great friends. And as you can see, they uh, played golf together. Um, so at one point, uh, and Jeff 
totally correct me if I'm uh, not telling the story correctly. <laughs> but uh, Frank and Jeff, they were together in, uh, in a golf cart. And in the other golf cart uh, was Ray Brown and Monty Budwick. And um, uh, in golf terms, uh, Frank's uh, long balls were uh, always pretty good. And Jeff's long balls weren't so good. They went all over the place. So Jeff makes a long ball and uh, the ball doesn't go in the direction that Jeff wanted to. And it actually ricochets off a couple trees like this. And it falls into high grass or tall grass. And uh, Frank looks at Jeff and he says, like, am I playing Chick Webb all of a sudden? <laughs> the, so that's a. So that's like a a typical a typical ah Jimmy Bond. See, I stand corrected. It was Ray Brown and Jimmy Bond in the other golf cart. But I, when Jeff told me that yesterday over the phone, uh, I <laughs> I laugh I laughed my own balls off because that was freaking funny. <laughs> Gives you a sense also of uh, the sense of humor that uh, Frank Cap had, yeah. and uh, and also that he was a very stylish uh stylish guy very very well dressed as you can see on those pictures as well yes he was a gentleman love those you can hear that and you can hear that in his playing too absolutely yes oh jeff said it was jimmy bond not monty budwig yep i stand corrected okay thank you jeff (laughs) good story there was a there was a chance that, that 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 needed to happen that i (laughs) <laughs> Needed some correction. <laughs> cool. Shall we uh, play? Um, well, speaking of Terry Gibbs, you you had a video of the Dream Band with uh, with Frank. Do you want to show that? Yeah, yeah. Cool. This is um, Alcone's arrangement of uh, Cottontail. Oh, great, great. Terry Gibbs we just had yeah with recently. Uh, Met Flory is on lead alto on this one, and Bob Cooper is in the band, and Conti Condoli takes uh, a, a trumpet solo, and a tenor player, Terry Harrington is his oh, name, Terry? takes a yeah. solo. Love Terry. Yep. Good. So this wow. should be good. What a band, as Jack Sheldon would say. <laughs> <laughs> what a band, what a night. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Jack Nimitz.
tipping. Yeah, there were some okay. Bill Berry, Pete Condoli. Benny Powell, Charlie Loper. Yep. Got to play with Charlie and Mike Barone's big band. Nimitz also played in his big band. Yeah, Bob Cooper, wow, Paul Smith. And Jim, that was Jim, wow. Yeah, that's a good rhythm section. Really great. Okay, fantastic. Thanks for selecting that one. That was really great. Yeah, well, I would get in trouble with Terry Gibbs if I wouldn't show <laughs> that one. Frank's really driving it on that. Boy, it just feels so good. You know? Yeah. How great is it that we could just, you know, Zoom, the technology that we can even talk, right, during the pandemic, we're having these interviews. I was just thinking how great that, not only that, but just this, all the music that's available now, you know, Spotify, YouTube, old records, tapes, CDs. It's just incredible that we have all yeah. this at our fingertips, you know, and we can we can share it. And, you know, I encourage people who are watching, you know, you just Google Frank, you know, Frank Cap, and you'll you can go down the rabbit hole with us. I mean, this is, this is, uh, it doesn't have to end here with us. You know, yeah. <laughs> we're just presenting uh, the music of a great drummer and, and his legacy and the different bands he played with. So I'm just marveling at that. That's so easy for us now. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Uh, Discogs is just really great, really great resource to uh, find information about uh, different kinds of records. Um, you can also buy uh, all of those records that are, on Discogs, and uh, I think Cap has 245 records credited under his uh, uh, that he worked yeah. on uh, on Discogs. I saw that. It's just incredible, and they're probably not even all up there. Yeah, that's right. Well, he uh, in an interview that I watched uh, on YouTube, he mentioned that he started to work for Warner Brothers because of. Gosh, who told him to work for uh, Previn, Andre Previn? He he worked with uh, Andre and Red Mitchell in uh, Andre's Andre Previn's trio, yeah. and uh, at some point uh, there was an opening uh, because one of the drummers at Warner Brothers um, uh, uh, retired. So uh, Andre was like, "Do you want to uh, take the spot at Warner Brothers?" And Frank took it. Wow. And worked yeah. on a bunch of TV shows. Yeah. That's so cool. And as I mentioned before to you, his actual like claim to fame is that he plays on I Got You Babe from Sonny and Cher. Yes. Among all his incredible contributions contributions to the jazz world, he played on so many pop and rock recordings. Um, yeah. And just incredible. Yeah. I and encourage everybody he... to... Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no worries. You go right ahead. I, I we've I was telling Kevin I found this clip of um, the Steve Allen Music Hour. If you if you go to YouTube and search Frank Cap Steve Allen, you'll see Terry Gibbs' band is there with Frank and Chuck Berghoffer on bass, and Steve Allen's just hilarious, and um, Burt Backrack's a guest. And you get oh. to hear Plaz Johnson and Chuck on electric and Frank playing back racks music. And it's just cool because in one show you could see his total range as a, you know, not only Frank, but of course someone like Chuck too, the just willingness to do all kinds of music, you know, and lend their, their artistry to that. So pretty cool. And a very young Bill Maher is Steve Allen's sidekick on this show. Oh, no actually. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> So it's really cool. Yeah, I was I was tempted to play that, but uh, we have we have so much music and stuff already. Yeah, there was uh, there's a Bob Florence record. It's not under Bob's name. Oh. Let me check it real quick. Um, because it's a it's a, a record from a soul singer that he made together with uh, Bob's big bands. Uh, oh. It's here of Big Miller. Uh, Big Miller, hmm. swing twists, swing sings, twists, shouts, and preaches with the big band of Bob Florence. Oh, cool! And it's all like uh, uh, gospely type of stuff, funky stuff, and uh, Frank just sounds great with just grooving along with all of those uh, with all of those uh, those charts, basically. So that That's shows great. you also like how how versatile. 
Frank actually was. Yeah. And and also sound wise, like it's just really, really great sound. Like his sound for jazz, but then his sound for like rock stuff, but then sound for gospel and funk is again different. So it was just really, really nice to figure out like how versatile and how adaptive he was yeah. for different kinds of music. Absolutely. Well, speaking of um, Andre Previn, maybe we could play something of Andre's. Yeah. That includes Frank, of course. I'll play a portion of it because it's a little long, but I just love the moodiness of it. And you can hear um, Andre's, of course, his not, not only his great piano playing, but also his his incredible breadth and understanding of classical music, which so many people knew him as a conductor and pianist. But um, I just love this record, and it's... Uh, um, 61, 1961. It's Andre Previn and J.J. Johnson, Mac the Knife, and it's all the songs from that uh, show, or most of them, with uh, uh, from Kurt Weil, Kurt Weil, excuse me, his songs. And it's Andre's uh, trio at the time with Red Mitchell on bass and uh, Frank on drums. And um, this is a really pretty melody called Barbara Song. And... Um, Frank doesn't come in for a little bit, but I just love this really kind of ethereal intro and what JJ's beautiful sound on this and then how Frank decides to accompany. Uh, it's just really orchestral and, and lovely. So this is a 1961 Andre Previn, JJ Johnson, Mac the Knife featuring our tribute guest, Frank Cap. I just transferred it from vinyl. <laughs> <laughs>
going mm-hmm. with a great Andre solo. I it's not even half done. Um, that's such a tasty build that they do as a trio, you know. Um, yeah, that that snare sound and yeah, just every it feels so good with Frank. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's the whole a, a could... swing, and that's a little bit more of the mellow mellow side of that record. But right. Um, yeah. Well, I got to check that out. And, and Alan is saying, uh, Alan Kaplan is saying that he wore that record out during college. Oh, really? Oh, man. Yeah, Alan. It's so great. It's, JJ sounds so beautiful on that. His tone. Oh, yeah, I'll transfer the rest of it, Kevin, and get it to you unless it's, yeah. It's a good copy, too, so it's, an, it's a nice transfer. It sounds good. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. That's Andre Previn. JJ, yeah, 1961, we're hanging, hanging. well, we're doing 60s and uh, seven, I guess 80s was Terry Gibbs' band, and yeah, the Juggernaut was, what, late 70s, or the one we uh, watched? Yeah, late, uh, the one that we watched uh, was, Maybe I Alan would say late. Since he was in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was early 80s, okay. if I'm not mistaken, 83, yeah. perhaps. Started the band in seventy five, is that right? Something I would like believe it. Yeah. I read I read that somewhere, yeah. But they made they made a couple of really, really great records. They made a a, a live record with uh, Joe Williams in Vegas at oh, yeah, uh, live great. at Century Plaza. Yeah, um, that. that's beautiful. I've heard that one. Uh the playing uh songs from the Neil Hefty songbook. They play they have the record out uh with that stuff. They made a bunch of really, really terrific stuff. Mm. Yeah. Juggernaut. Well, what else so shall we look at here? Um let me see what I have left. Um cause oh, his, his daughter's uh uh, Dev says uh, began in '75 at King Arthur's. Oh, King Arthur's! Uh, All right, thank you, Dev. That's great. And I think your your father also had a long running uh, gig at the Mexican restaurant Las Hadas in Northridge, if I'm not mistaken. That's true, right? I because I played with another big band there um, when I was a teenager, um, Joe Vento. <laughs> <laughs> he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nuts, and um, it was just Las Hadas was this. It was a cool restaurant, but it was like the band was just like tucked in this like tight little part of the room, and just you know hot and smelled like Mexican food. And I brought my keyboard and I was playing, and he'd yell at the band and tell us all to go, you know, go to hell and <laughs> in front of the audience. And not your dad. This is a <laughs> dev. This yeah. is Joe Vento, who had I think it was Wednesday nights. Anyway, they had big bands there. Yeah. Oh, yes, the last few years, she said. He loved it. No work, just show it and play it. Right, okay. So it was later in his career he was playing there. Yeah. Pretty right cool. on. They had a tradition of big bands there at Las Hadas in, in Northridge. Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying? Did you have something else do you want to do? Um, well, we showed already something from uh, the percussion group, but I wanted to – I listened to the full uh, record that he did in tribute to Les Brown. And uh, I thought that it was such a cool record um, with like some of the most famous uh, Les Brown uh, compositions uh, with uh, uh, Leapfrog, which is the band call for Les Brown and uh, BZ, if I'm not, if I'm pronouncing the the title correctly. Um, So uh, if I can uh, share my screen, I would like to play one tune off of that record. Sure. I'm gonna do Let that on my make sure I think you're good to do it now. Yep. Yeah. Gonna share my screen. Okay. Okay. And go to Spotify. Here we go. This tune is called uh, Little Brown's Jug.
sounds far away. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> So when was that uh, percussion record in, in reference to the others? Because I see here on Discogs there was also a tribute to Lawrence Welk percussion group and also mm -hmm. Glenn Miller. But I'm not seeing mm -hmm. I'm not seeing the Les Brown one on his discography. Do you know when it what year it was? Uh, I found it on Discogs and I would have to I'll look it guess up. Yeah. 63 perhaps. Oh okay, so they must have missed it and it's, it must be listed differently under I think they move stuff around depending on certain names and stuff. So, anyway, yeah, sixty-three. Wow, that was great. I'm just seeing that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just seeing that Dana also uh, joined us. Hey, hey what's Dana. up? Thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, the the thing the thing that I really uh, what I really love about this arrangement and about that band is how well the percussion section is mixed in the horn section, like the percussion section is also trading off of each other just now with like a, a conga solo with trades with a uh, Frank, but right. then also you have like bell solos and you have like weird percussion, uh, weird percussion solos in there, but then mixed with like really, really great big band writing. So I'm, I'm very curious who wrote all of those arrangements. Actually. I don't know who, um, who yeah. arranged all of that stuff. Well, could have been maybe Bob Florence. I mean, he did the other one. Man, I would, uh, that I would definitely think that Bob was maybe involved, involved with it. Yeah, maybe not every one of the, of the ones, but uh, yeah, that was really great. Yeah, they're they're really slick arrangements. I love, I love all these records. We early on we listened to that Jack Sp uh, Pete uh, Fountain presents Jack Sperling, and that was a very yeah. similar crafting of these arrangements around their the featured artist, and I they're just yeah. so slick. It doesn't really take away from the song or the other performances and there's great soloists it's just you're right it's it's how it's integrated is very very slick not something you hear people doing anymore yeah yeah great. especially especially this i mean like in in la it was quite common that you had like an extra vibraphone player sure. uh as part of the big as part of the big bands like with terry gibbs but there are plenty of big band stuff uh, that i've heard that uh larry bunker is featured on on a couple right. like vibe solos and all of that but this takes it to a whole another level to have like timpani and bells and uh, uh, uh marimba vibraphone all of the percussion instruments that you basically can think of right uh there it is i found it it's listed under a newer Frankie Cat Percussion Group. Yeah, they don't have the year. Oh, 60 mm. question mark. <laughs> uh, they say it gives a release uh, of six question mark. And no uh, personnel, of course. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> the only thing, the only thing that I found out was that Emil plays on that uh, recording. Seems like he actually. did all of them, probably. <laughs> I would assume so because he had. I mean, he, he had all of the. Yeah, and he and had Bunker. the finest. Yeah. yeah. And what's yeah, his he name? Had the who finest had cats. George Estes, the other guy yeah. who was on a lot of those. Yeah, and, oh. and sometimes, uh, sometimes if you needed like a bongo specialist, quote unquote, then this guy Jack Costanza would oh, be. Oh, Jack uh, Costanza. He's on yeah. this record, I think, that we didn't play, but I showed it to you, the Jazz City Workshop. Oh, yeah. Marty Page, yeah, Herbie Harper, Larry Bunker, Jack Costanzo, Frankie Cap, Curtis Counts. Yeah, yeah, that Million was records. listed on his discography, too. Yeah, I need to transfer this one. I don't think you can find it. It's pretty swinging. They're just playing tunes, and it's great. Mm. Yeah, 50, okay. late 50s. Uh, we got time for one more that I, I picked out. Yeah. To hear uh, to give the, the vocalist a little love. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. This is uh, the great Ella Fitzgerald, and um, she had this um, uh, famous record. Actually, it's live uh, live at Zardy's. Zardy's, um, from what I've learned, was a club not too far from where I live now in Hollywood, California. <laughs> uh, Hollywood and Vine up the street from where the old Shelley's manhole was and uh, not too far from uh, the old Catalina Bar and Grill uh, mm. and it was only um, Kevin and I were looking it up and it, it looks like it was only in operation from 1950 to 57 and um, this is uh, Frank on this track with Don Abney on piano uh, who worked a lot with Sarah Vaughn and um, I'm forgetting the bass player. I'll look it up while we're while we're uh, listening. But this is Ella Fitzgerald, and very begrudgingly at the beginning of this, uh, uh, playing the song that that sounds like someone requests in the in the audience. So, but then proceeds, <laughs> but then proceeds to kill it anyway. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what she does. So this is Ella Fitzgerald, 1956, with our tribute artist uh, Frankie Cap on drums. The tender trap. All right. <laughs> Forget about the routine. Tender trap. You see a pair of laughing eyes, and suddenly you're sighing sighs. You think it's nothing wrong, you string along, boy, and then snap. in the breeze you think you're acting smart until your heart just goes whap boo doo be doo 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 those trees that breeze they're part of the tender trap some starry night when his kisses make you tingle yourself for being single and all at once it seems so nice the folks are throwing shoes and rice you hurry to a spot that's just a dot on the map boo doo be doo 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 you wonder how it all came about it's too late now there's no getting out you fell in for being single and all at once it seems so nice the folks are throwing shoes and rice you hurry to a spot that's just a dot on the map you wonder how it all came about it's too late now there's no getting out you fell in love
so much. Thank you. That was oh, wonderful. well, the wonderful Ella Fitz. Yeah, that was great and shows off how great of a brush player Frank is, too. Yes. That sound and just swinging. Oof. Yeah, that's yeah, that's also that it, that's also a record that I'm going to check out for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I just got them all off YouTube. I mean, I'm going to try and find the vinyl or a better, you know, original recording. But yeah, I was thinking mm -hmm. that I, when I listened to it, I was like, man, he never goes. To, obviously, it's too short, really. To, I guess you could go to sticks, but I love that he just simmers, you know, the yeah. whole time while on the br on his brushes and tasty, and never yeah. need much else than that. It just make it feel good, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's all. That's all. That's all that you need to do in that yeah. kind of situation. Yeah, just, just swinging. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, that's uh, that's a lot of material that we showed, and I'm super, super happy that we could uh, that we could do this, and super inspirational that we can listen to all of this music that uh, Frank Cap was a, a part of. So, uh, uh, we'll uh, we're gonna finish up. I would like to thank uh, an honorable thank you to Mr. Jeff Hamilton for consulting us on this uh, episode. That was super super nice of you, Jeff. So really really thank you uh, on behalf of uh, Josh and myself. Also a really uh, a great thank you to uh, Devney Kelly for joining us, Frank's daughter. Really nice to get in touch with you, and I'm sure that me and Josh will. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll reach out to you to, uh, to do some music talks. Um, we'll be back in a uh, few weeks because next week uh, we're also taking the week off because Josh is actually going to be out of town. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, see you guys all in a few weeks again. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here and listening to the music with us. Yeah. All right. See you next time. And we're clear. And we're clear. <laughs> <laughs>